Hey guys and welcome back to our photography video blog. The blog ties in with our extremely popular and exciting foundation in photography course. So a lot of you guys have been asking me about how do you get slower shutter speeds during the day in situations where there may be too much light. We're going to be discussing a filter that will help you in situations like this. So, let's take shooting a waterfall on a bright sunny day as an example. In this situation, you may want to use a slow shutter speed to allow the motion of the waterfall to flow through the scene and create a nice blurred effect that you commonly see or that is commonly used. But when you set your camera to the shutter speeds and aperture combination that you think you need to capture the flow of the water, the image may become overexposed. There is just too much light in a situation like this to get the slower shutter speed that you actually want. So let's have a look at what this scene might look like. So here we have the results you might be getting in a situation like this. We know we want the water to flow through the scene, so we pick a shutter speed of maybe around 1 30th of a second. We go for an aperture of maybe f22 to capture that full depth of field and also to restrict as much light into the camera as possible to help us get those lower shutter speeds that we're looking for. The other option you have is to reduce or limit light getting into the camera or get slower shutter speeds is to keep the ISO as low as possible, say 100 for most cameras, which would be the lowest. If when we have all of these settings utilized and we are still getting an overexposed image, then it will be difficult to get the effect of motion in this shot that we've looked for without it being too bright. The image here represents this particular situation. In this case, because we are at the smallest aperture and the lowest ISO, the only mechanism we would have to reduce the light and get a good exposure would be to change that shutter speed. However, as we speed up the shutter and reduce the amount of light getting into the scene, or reduce the amount of light in the scene, we will also have that secondary effect of motion being recorded as frozen or more static. And then we can't capture that effect of the blurred water we wanted. To work around this, we have what's called a neutral density filter or an ND filter. Neutral density filters reduce the amount of light entering the lens and allowing you to have slower shutter speeds in bright situations. Neutral density filters come in different densities or stops. They usually come in a variety of stops such as one, two or three stops or so on. In each case they reduce the amount of light coming into the camera by that particular stop amount. So a 0.6 neutral density filter for instance reduces the amount of light coming into the camera by two stops. For current students on my course, we will be discussing the concept of stops of light in lesson 8, so don't worry if this is a new concept to you. ND filters screw onto the front of your lens, so just make sure that the diameter of the filter matches the diameter of your lens. You can also build up neutral density filters by screwing them together, so you're kind of stacking up the amount of light that it reduces. This will allow you to keep cutting the amount of light coming into the camera. You can also get what's called a variable neutral density filter, where you can physically turn the filter and adjust the density of that particular filter, essentially adjusting the amount of light it reduces. Great filter to have in your kit, as you won't have as many individual filters. So going back to this shot, here we have a scene with the settings the way that we want to use them. But unfortunately the exposure is still about two stops overexposed. So as we have no other functions of the camera that can help us reduce the amount of light to get the correct exposure and use a slower shutter speed, we can call on the ND filter or to reduce more light. As my scene is two stops overexposed, I will use an ND filter that reduces the amount of light by two stops. So here is the resulting exposure from attaching that 0.6 ND filter to our lens. Remember that a 0.6 ND filter reduces the amount of light by two stops. The light is now reduced by two stops, allowing us to get that slower shutter speed of 1 30th of a second that we wanted. ND filters are great in, for any situation where you want to capture flowing motion in bright conditions and is an essential part of any kit and helps us get that correct exposure with that nice flow or movement of motion through the scene. Guys, thanks as always for watching 
and we'll see you back again for next week's video blog.